<clears throat> Yo, what is up guys? So for today we're going to be talking about Destiny 2. Now specifically we're going to be looking at the Vidoc that Bungo released not too long ago. And if you guys haven't seen the Vidoc, uh, go watch it. I'll have the link in the description below. But if you just want like the cliff notes, like what was important, what, what do you want to see, or what do you want to hear, then just keep watching. But essentially... The whole starting point of this Vidoc, I mean, I mean like 70, 60% of the Vidoc was just information we already knew when it comes to like Europa, the the storm mechanic that they're introducing, the new subclasses and exotics that we're getting. A lot of the information that we got was just information we already knew. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. It's just, it's unfortunate because I would have loved to see a little bit I, w I would have loved to see them dig a little bit more into, like, more of what we're going to see. Especially since we're also getting a season on top of Beyond Light. So, kind of like Shadowkeep. When Shadowkeep came out, we had Shadowkeep and Season of the Undying. In this situation, it's going to be Beyond Light and Season of the Hunt. Which I will be explaining in a bit. But, yeah. <laughs> Essentially, we were just being told that... The stranger has now time to explain all the time in the world, apparently. And with that, let's get on to the actual stuff that they told us that was new. So essentially, Season of the Hunt, we team up with Aldrin and we team up with Osiris. Which is interesting because I'm kind of tired of seeing his bald face, but whatever. Uh... It's interesting we're, we're team, teaming up with Aldrin because essentially when he comes out, he saves Osiris from almost getting killed by a hive, which is still weird to me because like the dude's like like uber powerful and just gets sidelined by a, by a hive that wasn't even in his right mind. I'm just kind of like, okay, sure, sure this would happen. <laughs> That's like I'm not I'm being honest. That was my first thought. Like yeah, sure this would happen for sure, but. What's really cool is we see Crow come out, and I'm gonna be interchanging his name. I just I'm an idiot like that. But we see Crow stab the Hive enemy with a sword from the Dreaming City. Very, very befitting. But what I found weird was why is pulled pork sound like our gar our our ghost? Like why does he sound so similar to our ghost? We warned you it was going to be dangerous down here. Impossible. bug the fucking shit out of me but it's very nitpicky so i don't really care but we're gonna see crow come back and i'm very interested to see more of his story mostly because i'm expecting him to be hunter vanguard which is something i despise i think that's a stupid idea especially if you take into account the the hunter dare because if he does become Hunter Vanguard, then does that mean that we become Hunter Vanguard or Petra Venge? Because, you know, we did kill Aldrin, the one who completed the Hunter Vanguard dare. So, if they just ignore that fact, then I, I think that's just lazy. Because, and I don't care if you tell me, oh yeah, but he didn't pick up the challenge. Or he didn't, like, complete the challenge. So that's why he gets it. That's a lazy excuse, in my opinion. So, yeah, let me know what your, your thoughts in the comments below. But, we also see what seems to be the event, the event uh, activity for Season of the Hunt, which is basically these, like, obelisks called Cryptoliths. They basically mutate Elixni and Hive, Elixni being Fallen, and it just looks like another hi uh, horde mode. It looks like another generic horde mode that we've done over and over, and... I'm personally, whatever's to be honest, uh, for the first few weeks it'll be cool and then after a while it'll be dead. Like, pretty much how every of these <laughs> events have been, aside from Season of Dawn, because Season of Dawn they did it correctly, they did it matchmaking, which meant people were always playing. But, I just, me personally, if it's not match made, then I think the game mode is just gonna die within a few weeks like it usually does. But... If they're doing it on the Dreaming City, then I find it very hard to believe that they would make it matchmaking in any capacity. 
unless they made that whole area just matchmake. Like, I mean, like, once you enter it, you enter this matchmaking screen, which would be cool. I would think that would be, like, the best way to do it. Or if you had, like, an NPC that would be like, oh, do you want to enter? Cool. What levels do you want? Do you want to do the hard hardest level? Okay, cool. Let's find you a team. That would be cool. But just throwing ideas off the top of my head. So... We also see what seems to be the armor for Season of the Hunt. If this is the armor for the Hunters, I'm pretty much okay with it. If this is like the basic bitch armor, like, or not the basic bitch armor, but the the seasonal armor for that season, I'm going to be kind of disappointed. I kind of wanted to see a little bit more, uh, more ornamental stuff. It just seems kind of barren to me, but we'll see. And... Probably the most important piece of information that I didn't even say is the fact that the cryptoliths are actually being controlled by Shivu Arath. So if you guys don't know who Shivu Arath is, she is the third sister of Crota. No, she's the second sister of Crota. Or Oryx, I'm sorry. So if you guys really don't know, it's Oryx who we killed in uh, Taken King. Then it's Savathun who you should know by now. And then the last one being Shivu Arath. Shivu Arath is probably one of my favorite sisters just because she's fucking crazy. Uh, lore wise, like, <clears throat> she, if I remember correctly, she's like the god of war or something like that. So that's fucking cool. And I'm excited to see more of her. Hopefully, they don't just kind of like throw her in with like nothing to grow off of, especially if they like somehow just like, oh yeah, we're just gonna. We're going to put her here and then never put her again until, like, fucking, then, like, Lightfall, if that hap or Fall, yeah, Lightfall. If that happens, I'm going to be sad, because I think Shivu Arath is really cool. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's all my notes that I said. Obviously, I could have gone through the video, and basically how I've done every other Vidoc up to this point is... Just go through the video, explain some things I, th I find cool, and then just make that video. But I just didn't find the value because it was just a bunch of information that we already knew. And I just didn't think I would find it fun. But like, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of cutscenes. There's a lot of gameplay that we haven't seen. But it's not meaty enough, in my opinion, that warranted a whole like video breakdown and whatnot uh last few things i should probably know uh we get a we get we find out who the cosmodrome vendor is it's shahan which is the guy from the new light system which is really cool i think he looks cool i i question the hunter who changed him he does not look cool at all uh bungo I could promise you I could have made a really cool hunter that looked like all the armor fit, but it's different pieces. I could have, pro I could promise you I could have made that for you, <clears throat> but that's the hunter we got. Uh, he's not indicative to how hunters are or look. I don't think he looks cool at all, but he does look like a basic bitch. Also, he has raid armor. <laughs> I thought that was cool, but whatever. Uh, Honestly, he's, he seems like a really cool character. I'm excited to do the new light system, which I'm definitely going to do for Beyond Light. And I have so many plans for Beyond Light. Hell, I have a, I have a plan for coming a, or coming video right now where today is the day I'm getting my Collector's Edition. And I'm hopefully going to do a review on the Collector's Edition. So look out for that video if you're interested in the Collector's Edition. Overall... Bungie, this video really just showed us that Bungie's just still working and putting in the work, which I, I, I genuinely think is dope, especially during this, uh, during these tried times, you know, and overall, I'm excited to see what Beyond Light has. I'm excited to see what, I'm excited to see what season of the hunt has to offer there's just a lot to really delve into when you really think about it we have beyond light we have the season of the hunt on top of the changes that are coming to like armor 
on top of the changes that are coming to weapons and just a bunch of stuff overall i i just can't wait to get this in my hands already we have like what three more weeks and i'm still trying to finish up some like titles that i don't have yet like shadow i'm definitely gonna get i don't think i'm gonna get the the uh, iron smith or whatever it's called blacksmith i think i don't think i'm gonna get i'm gonna get that one mostly because i don't want to and reckoner fuck reckoner i'm not doing that uh, i was thinking about doing it but fuck that um what else i think there's one thing i wanted to talk about but i don't remember i'll probably have it well like on the screen oh shit no no i just remember so on top of the whole you know the on top of the vidoc they also showed us the season map for beyond light which i thought was interesting i'll have the picture up in a bit let me just read what bungie says first destiny 2 beyond light kicks off on november 10th with guardians traveling to europa to investigate the threats mysteries and power residing there season season of the hunt also being in, on november 10th you'll be able to start earning ranks and rewards from season pa from the season pass claim your artifact and begin to customize it as you powered up this season's sto story mission and new wrathborn hunts activity will kick off the following week on november 17th this season's story mission and new wrathborn hunts huh wrathborn hunt okay starting with season of the hunt most of the seasonal content and all of the sweet gear will be sticking around for all of year four. We hope this alleviates some of the FOMO that has been present with past seasons. Now you can ju jump back in and experience past season story activities and loot anytime during year four. Here is a look at the calendar for Beyond Light and Season of the Hunt for a glimpse of what we have to offer. Or we have what we have in store for you. So if you look in the screen right now, you'll see a picture of the roadmap, which is interesting. <coughs> So we do see what is it seasonal artifact and rewards tracks reward track unlocks empire hunt begins and the glassway strike opens which is the day the beyond light expansion comes out uh the 10th through the oh shit so uncover europa secrets adept weapons coming in the 13th of next month then season mission begins wrathborn hunts begins on the 17th the raid opens up in the 21st the first iron banner comes out on the 8th then the dawning on the 5th or i'm sorry the 15th to the 5th of uh, january and then much more so new exotic weapons and armor hawk moons cloud strike no time to explain duality salvation's grip the lament uh this is basically just exotics that we already know Beyond Light, the, the Beyond Light campaign begins Stasis Unlocks, Titan Behemoth, uh, Warlock Shadebinder, and Hunter Revenant, Salvation's Grip Exotic, and Grenade Launcher Quest. Free to all players, new Destination Europa, new Cosmodrome Experience, new Season Armor, the Exotic Weapon, and Exotic Weapon, I'm sorry. New Strike added to playlist, new Lost Sectors, interesting. 100 Seasonal Ranks, 100 plus Seasonal Ranks, that probably just means that they're, you know, 100 plus seasonal ranks, whatever. Like, you can go up to, like, more than 100 now, but after going to 100, it doesn't give you anything extra aside from the um, seasonal engrams. Uh, where was I? Oh, new artifact mods, new triumphs, shaders and emblems, iron banner, and the donning. So, oh. so, that's pretty much it, guys. That's actually it. There's nothing else that I know of that's new. If there is, let me know in the comments below. But unfortunately, yeah, that's all I have for you today. Uh, I still, I'm still thinking about making the Beyond Light story trailer, uh, trailer thing. But I just really didn't care, to be quite honest. It just shows uh, Aramis talking, and I thought it was interesting. But you yeah, know, we'll see, we'll see. But let me know what your thoughts in the comments below. If you guys want to follow me on my social media outlets, links are in the description below. Thank you everyone for the support. I really do appreciate it. Uh, again, I do apologize that I have not been keeping up with Destiny 2 or just my channel recently. It's just uh, 
Dude, man, let me tell you, burnout is a thing, and I felt it really hard this week. All I've been playing is this little game called Dragon Quest Builders 2. It's one of my favorite games. I started replaying it just for the fuck of it, and it has done so much for me. I think I'm playing it a little too much because it's fucking up my sleeping schedule. Because actually, this video would have been up way faster if I did, if I knew that Bungie was making a Vidoc, which I didn't check yesterday. So I'm gonna pull back from playing that and start making some more content. Some more, actually, I've been thinking about making more content for Destiny 2, with, like to the point where I'm telling you guys, like, oh, get these things before they leave or whatnot. Especially like titles, because titles are leaving. Like once this week, once this week ends. You're, you can't do any of the three week stuff. So this is the last week to get any of the things that take like three weeks to get. So that's, that's wild. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I won't say my whole spiel again, but yeah, be safe guys. You know what's happening in the world and I will see you guys later.